ultimately the reason why you know uh, uh you know Haley and eric and anahi are from geo design is we are rooted in wanting to build the gis map and so you know um i think uh this this reports that we're providing is our mvp it's our minimum viable product we wanted to get something out there in the hands of users and find out is this a value will you pay for it so we've been doing that and we're, we're continuing to do that the next stage was really to raise capital to build the map i think we're doing that kind of early stage right now in conjunction but um yeah the map's going to be exciting we this data uh, uh, and the ability to provide this information quickly on a map format. Even today, I, I come to across, I think, Eric, uh, you helped me kind of uh, call the planning department for Buena Park on two lots because um, an agent had asked me for a favor to see if any developers wanted to build potentially 60 units. And how did she come up with that number? She has no idea, right? She's an agent, but she said, look, uh, you know, early talks with planning department said, they'll potentially rezone to the project across the street, right, Eric? And then Eric called the planning department. What happened? Like, we, they don't know, right, <laughs> off the top. What happened when you when you called them earlier today? Yeah, well, the, the guy who answered the phone wasn't sure. And then he tried to forward me to someone else within the department, and they were out of the office. So I had to look it up, and I went through some of the Buena Park sort of real estate guidelines about parking, and... The, the lot across the street has, I think, 272 parking spots, and it's mixed use. So it's 60 units of housing on top of a bottom floor, which is basically like a miniature mall with all the retail they have there. Mm -hmm. So I'm not exactly sure. I didn't spend a whole lot of time looking at it, but there's definitely some minimum parking requirements based on both the retail and the residential space. Mm -hmm. And the entire lot is pretty big. I think the building itself took up maybe a quarter of it. The rest is parking in addition to a parking garage underneath the building. So the, the spot across the street that she was talking about is definitely a lot smaller. So I don't think you could fit that much parking in. So you'd probably have to downscale from 60 units. Absolutely. But she was verbally telling me and other agents, hey, you could build 60 units just like across the street without doing any sort of due diligence. So again, this highlights the point. I talked to Tucker today. I go, so other people doing due diligence, there's no map that covers uh, anything outside of the city of LA. And the city of LA has Zemus, which now in comparison still is pretty uh, a great solution but at the same time it's like none of the munis have any sort of mapping solution so you literally have to go through pdf files of parcel maps and zoom in and size them yourself right find out what the width and length are of lots multiply them and then come up with the solution so again i'm just saying we need the map and we're super excited to be in early stages to start doing that but you know obviously we feel that this map is going to be super powerful if it covers city of LA, if it expands through all the, you know, Buena Park and Cerritos and Culver City and all the uh, unincorporated cities and municipalities across Southern California and broadly for the U.S., right? If every city has a GIS map powered by ESRI with relevant data that quickly can be accessible, but we also now, the cities don't fully understand, hey, well, what data should we provide, right? Because you're working from the city. But the agent's like, look, I'm just trying to sell this property. So I just need to know max units, what's parking, what's height, yada, yada. And I put that on a report and I send that off. And then the developer goes, wait a minute here. I'm going to actually have to underwrite this site. But of course, they then come full circle and work with Alex and, uh, uh, you know, an entitlement consultant, right, for that underwriting and that uh, submission. So it's kind of full circle but it's being done very, like Eric said, just with calls. And I hate to say this, but people you're calling that run the planning department, the, the desk, are just recent grads of uh, <laughs> urban planning, probably from USC, if not some other schools. So they themselves don't have that. You know, they're looking in the book. They're going, oh, wait, can, what's the setback? Uh, here's an example for you guys. Uh, what's the setback on a commercial property on a C-zone lot if you're doing residential. So, uh, you know, uh, this one developer was adamant, hey, I called city planning and they said it's 10 feet or whatever feet that you require. And we were like, no, it's zero, right? It's commercial, right? Like there is no setback. That's why you go in downtown and you go street and it goes, wow, Chipotle, like literally right there. It's enough for a sidewalk. There's no setback. 
it's because it's a C zone using residential use. So there's no front setback, right? And so who told that developer there was a setback? LA City Planning. But again, recent grad, manning the desk, they don't have that information readily available.